Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Selhorn and welcome to another episode of The Remote Show where we discuss everything to do with remote work with the people who know it best. Thanks so much for listening. The Remote Show is brought to you by WeWork Remotely, the largest community of remote workers in the world. With over 220,000 unique users per month, WeWork Remotely is the most effective way to hire. Today we are blessed to be learning out loud with Jason Goldlist. Jason is CEO and co-founder of Venue.Live. Jason believes authentic community building needs to bring together learning, connection, and growth with company leaders and with fellow community members. Every month since 2014, Jason has hosted events for 50,000 plus members of TechTO, Canada's largest tech community. Not only did they spotlight tech leaders and share lessons learned, but they've dedicated half the time of every event to community members meeting each other and making their own announcements too. During the pandemic, Jason and the team at Venue created the space for online interactions that delivered some of the same outcomes they sought with TechTO. Now that they are back in person, they are continuing to produce online opportunities to learn and grow together. Jason, please tell us, what problems are you trying to solve with Venue? Hey, thanks for having me, Tyler. Uh, Venue is all about solving the problem of communicating at scale. Whether it's your company that's growing, your community that's growing, it's easy to sit around the kitchen table and chat with the folks on your team. It's actually not even so difficult to get a group of 10 people on a video call and have a productive discussion or conversation. But as those numbers climb to the hundreds, to the thousands and beyond, there are a lot of challenges that folks run into to keep people aligned, informed, inspired, motivated, and engaged. Okay. So when we're talking about, gro obviously our communities, we we'd like to see them grow, right? Um, what was the point that you identified, ooh, <laughs> this way we've been doing things is breaking, right? What, what was the trigger to say, oh, there's a problem here that needs solving? What I noticed is that um, when the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And the tool that business leaders and communication leaders and community leaders have at their fingertips are documents. So we create documents. We write out, we organize, we edit, and we uh, collaborate, and we send out documents and documents and documents. And I thought this was funny because when we're actually creating relationships, when we're making important decisions, we use video. <laughs> we get on the phone, we get on the video call, we meet in person, and we have richer, higher fidelity comms when we can add video, audio, combined with the full senses. Um, but that toolkit is missing from every business leader's uh, portfolio. If you think about it, if your company is using Google Drive today, where are the video tools? Sure, you can spin up a spreadsheet, you can spin up a document, but how do you create a video? How do you edit that video? How do you share that video? How do you highlight that video? How do you even search or find a video that's already been made? It's an entire missing toolkit. And the big aha moment for me was as my teams were scaling, as my community was scaling, I wanted to preserve the rich communications we had with video and I didn't have the skills. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm hearing this, this spectrum that has been a theme here on the, the remote show is the idea that there is this, this I, spectrum between things that are best done in an asynchronous document based fashion and things that are better done synchronously with, with video or with a video conferencing. Uh, and I, I'm hearing you say that there might even be something in between that there's like recordings that we want to to manage as well as, uh, you know, just just be present with people like tell me more about this. You've zoomed in on this this spectrum of of, OK, we're going to live inside the video side and there's there's things that are lacking inside the document space. What are you identifying as these these key components of? Obviously, we're talking on video right here today. Some of us are listening uh, via audio on a podcast player. So like, there's all these different kind of things happening all at once. Like, You could be reading a transcript if you're, you're less of an auditory learner. Uh, tell us, you know, how, how do we match up all these different ways of, of connecting and learning together? Sure. Well, the great Canadian philosopher Marshall McLuhan said, the medium is the message. 
So it really depends what we're trying to convey. And a great business leader, a great comms leader is going to think about the medium and not just, again, use the tools they have at their disposal for every solution. Um, so when I was going through this uh, journey, I did it both at the same time with a company uh, and I also did it with the community. The company, uh, I was a 10th employee at a company called Wealth Simple, which is a $5 billion Canadian fintech. Uh, it does, if you're an American listener, it does what Coinbase, Robinhood, Wealthfront, and Venmo do in the Canadian market. It's a fintech super app. Uh, and today that's over a thousand employees. And at the same time, I was using the communication skills at TechTO, which is uh, a meetup group that I co-founded where uh, we started hosting uh, meetups for 10 and then 100 and then thousands of people. And today is a national organization that runs events for thousands and tens of thousands of people every year. And what I noticed is that uh, I needed lots, when I thought I was gonna go from written word to video, I didn't know all the skill. I didn't even know what I didn't know. <laughs> and I first decided to do it. I thought, oh, I'm, I will just hold a Zoom. And then I thought, okay, well, that didn't work. Like, uh, maybe we'll hold one of these online virtual events. And I was like, well, what am I trying to do? Why does it have to be live? Maybe I'll record a video. And I floundered and floundered and trying to add the skills, learning a new software to get sophisticated live streaming, learning a video editing tool to figure out how to make content for an asynchronous platform, trying to figure out, wait a second, why I can't communicate with my company on a public YouTube channel. How do I create that content and put in somewhere else. And so I started developing this mental map that you're talking about, which looks like understanding your goals. Am I delivering a message or am I looking for interactivity? And does that need to be live or can it be asynchronous? And what I try to do now is understand what I'm trying to achieve for my goals and then fit the right use case for it. I'll give you an example, uh, a wonderful, uh, practice that we instituted in uh, both the community and the company is an AMA, an ask me anything, a way to really get um, the company speaking with executives in an honest and transparent way. This is best done live. I believe it because you want to be able to catch a leader um, in a space where they don't know what's coming and they don't have time to practice with their PR team and spin it. And you want to feel an authentic response. This is something that you've got to have a purpose-built tool to do this live on video. On the other hand, if you've already done the work to create a 2023 strategy and you want to communicate what's important to the leadership team out to the company, well, they don't need to log on uh, live to hear you recite the PowerPoint. We can actually create a video and we can share it in a secure, internal, YouTube-like place where people can like and subscribe and comment and search it after and reference it again and go back to it. So really disaggregating what your goals are and finding the right method and mode for each is what's important here. I did not have McLuhan on my remote show bingo card, but I am ecstatic to, to add it to the future ones. Um, yes, the medium is the message. And when we become intentional about the messages we need to send, we get much more intentional about the mediums we choose to communicate them. I cannot emphasize how <laughs> ecstatic I am to have you saying those things and, and you know, echoing uh, McLuhan's ideas here in this moment. It's really the, the unlock for people to say, okay, what do I want people to hear me saying? What do I want them to understand following the communication I send? I want them to be able to fill in your blank and choose the correct methods by which to communicate that in a way that they will actually learn. The outcome is achieved. That is the, the thing. I mean, we're, my ears were like burning as you, as you talk and spit that fire for us, Jason. So, so Tyler, let's, let's apply it to what we're doing right now. Uh, I am imagining that most of the folks are listening via podcast to, our, uh, to us right now. Um, by choosing to do this on a podcast without a live studio audience, uh, we're sort of saying, hey, get inside the heads of Tyler and Jason. Listen to us. Uh, we have things to say, and we hope that you learn from our conversation. Now, if we were taping this uh, 
for example, on a platform that allowed people to listen in, to maybe be able to be chatting live alongside it, to ask questions that we might take from the audience, even just to leave emojis as we go to know that, oh, uh, I guess no one was really excited about the McLuhan reference. Uh, we didn't get a lot of excitement there. But every time I talk about uh, internal YouTube, the hearts are flying. Hey, we can adjust on the fly, but we didn't choose that medium for today. So what we're saying is listen to this conversation. But I, I, what I'm, what I'm uh, advocating is that businesses and communications leaders need more tools in their toolkit so that they can be uh, very strategic about the way that they choose to deliver messages. And sometimes even if we were on that, a live platform doing this, Tyler, we might not take questions. We might not change our content based on live emoji feedback like you get on Instagram Live. But the way that it's being consumed by the audience is changed. The fact that they can do that, they have outlets to give live feedback, makes them feel connected to us and the learnings and the messages in a different way. So all I'm saying is that uh, folks need to be more strategic in how they deliver it. And just because you have Google Meet included in your Google Suite or the company has a Zoom subscription doesn't mean that all communications go through Microsoft Word and Zoom. Uh, there are creative ways that will help you more effectively achieve your goals and, in a lot of cases, less expensively as well. Uh, I would love to chat a little about the cost of getting this wrong and, of course, the unlock of getting this right. Well, I just want to you know, underscore the the emphasis uh, of saying let's be less accidental and more strategic, right? Including, you know, when we're talking about, like, what does it cost to be able to do this kind of thing? What's interesting is um, in today's climate, a lot of folks are taking a look at the credit card statements. They're taking a look at the bank statements, and they're looking to reduce some zeros. And in many scaling companies, especially the ones that we work with, the cost is mostly associated with the people on the team. And unfortunately, we're seeing that in the world of uh, announcements around layoffs and teams being uh, let go and folks looking for work right now. The flip side of that is that for the folks that you do have remaining on staff, the biggest unlock on cost is how do you make them most productive? And a, a common trope in async world is saying, hey, reduce, re eliminate all meetings. Meetings are very expensive. You know, we did some back of the, the napkin math and we think for every hundred people that you have on a live call, that's a $5,000 an hour uh, meeting. And so you can imagine if you have a big team, a big community with hundreds of people and you do a weekly one hour or a monthly one hour, you're spending hundreds of thousands and in some cases millions of dollars a year on those meetings. And so the question is, what is the ROI on those meetings? If you're being accidental about your choice, if you have a culture where it's like, oh, another Zoom where they're going to talk about the strategy. <laughs> if you have a place where you want people to be heard and yet you're putting them on those webinar feeling uh, presentations, you're, you're burning money. And the flip side of that is, um, how do you reinvent your communications so that you're actually saving that money and yet even aligning them more with the messages and more with your outcomes and more with the goals you're looking for, which can be anything from compliance with the strategy. Like I need them to know that we're actually going B2B this, this quarter and not B2C all the way down to I, I need people to feel inspired and engaged by our messages and our leadership and want to want to go to bat and come up with new ideas and engage with these things. So it can be very hard. It can be very soft. Uh, and I think it's the role of leadership to make better choices that save money and make communications more effective. I, what I'm hearing you say is that when we become more intentional, the outcomes that we seek become less expensive over the short term and long term. When, when we actually center the understanding of the receiver of communication, that information becomes actionable. That information uh, becomes more engaging. That 
idea uh, becomes adopted much quicker and more easily. Uh, when we decide, okay, here's the spectrum of communication uh, mediums, right? And we choose things that are uh, built for the message that we are actually trying to communicate. We are more successful and the outcomes of the business outcome, the, the final result is going to be delivered much more easily. Like it ladders up to the top line number of, of the business. Exactly. And a really good example of this is if you think about a company that's going through um, a very difficult layoff, which impacts a lot of people's lives, the company doesn't want to do it. The people working there don't want to do it. The inv nobody wants to do it, but it's, it's the business reality for um, to set up the business and the people for success. You can imagine how much time and effort goes into that communication to get it right. Because we see on social media, when they get it wrong, when it's an inauthentic thing and the CEO pretends to cry or they cancel everyone's bonus and yet they walk home with their big bonus, how inauthentic it feels. And those are the minority. They go viral for that. But most people are spending a lot, a lot of time on getting this communication right. And then what? Then you've got 90, 80, 75% of the team left. What about the communication there? How do you keep that? That, the, that is when the game begins to unlock the communication with the remaining folks and say, okay, we've saved some money now. And now it's really about unlocking the potential of the people who are here to do more with less. And I think that is the way we need to think about it where, um, you know, you don't want to, this is a terrible analogy. We don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face save a little bit here on the, like you've already made the big one. Tyler, your nose is beautiful. Don't please leave it. Uh, <laughs> for those listening, you got to get to the YouTube channel and see it's a great nose, right? <laughs> you don't want to do that. And um, I think that's the way it happens here. You want a culture perhaps of austerity, but it's really also a culture uh, built around a vision of what you're going to accomplish with the team and being able to clearly communicate that, reinforce that, repeat that in ways that are interesting. We know repetition is king and queen. It's royalty um, in companies, but doing it in a way that's not, oh, again, we know, you know, tw you know, uh, 30 million by 2030, that's the goal, right? It's like, we've heard it 30 by 30, 30 by 30. How do you keep it interesting? How do you keep it exciting? How do you keep it engaged? And that means varying the way that you communicate live, asynchronous, document, video, uh, memes, uh, you know, podcasts, doing all these things uh, to keep the community or to keep your employees really aligned to the mission and excited about where they're going. Yeah, so the, the thing that is, you know, we're, we're learning from the, the best. We're, we're saying to ourselves, our products are going omni-channel, right? Uh, why aren't our communication internally going omni-channel, right? We, we need to have it documented. We need to have it written down. We also need to be, you know, willing to uh, face the chance of having ourselves go viral. Uh, <laughs> that, that uh, you know, we, we said something out of turn and, and also maybe even apologizing about the thing that maybe we shouldn't have said in the first place uh, in a way that is authentic, in a way that is able to be received as sincere, right? And... You know, how do we communicate that? Well, we've got to have it in all the places, right? Some people are going to not find us. Uh, they, they might work in a time zone that isn't conducive to being able to be present, uh, you know, at the live meetup, right? But you might be able to, you know, record that and, and that person be able to see that person on stage, like, like, you know, struggling with their answer, right? Like that is a real moment that, you know, maybe you do want those sorts of things to go viral. I guess maybe that's what I'm curious to ask more from you, Jason, is how do we as, as company leaders or even like to just team leader at a regular weekly meeting, um, how do we make sure that we are saying the things that are going to be positively impacting the business, right? We'd rather avoid, we'd like to avoid those, those negative viral moments, but how do we go viral, uh, you know, you know with, the, with the vision of the company, right? What are those things that we can do to become better in those moments? This is a great question. And I think what it comes down to is it comes down to storytelling. Whether you're telling your story externally on the social media channels, like you mentioned, and we know those are, are dominated today by video, by uh, Instagram reels, 
by YouTube shorts, by TikToks, uh, whether they're live or clips, video is dominating external social media. So if you are trying to uh, unlock talent because you're recruiting, if you're trying to raise awareness of the product because you're growing, uh, people are using video on social platforms and they're going viral. You know, they'd say there's no such thing as bad publicity, but going viral probably for any reason is great for you as you get more eyeballs and more curiosity and people read about what you have to offer. Now, uh, internally, I think it's the same thing. What's the campaign that you're going to do internally? What are you trying to achieve and accomplish? And how are you going to use um, the equivalent of words, audio, and video to achieve your goals? And I think a lot of times we start, again, with the tools that we know, which is, oh, we'll make um, a dot dash of what we're doing. Here's the headlines I need to get. Here's the supporting uh, document. Here's the supporting arguments for it. And it sort of looks like the outline of an essay. And I'd say that's because those are the tools we've had at our, at our disposal. Storytelling is also visual and it's audio and um, the skills needed to put together compelling messages internally are missing as well. And let me tell you how I've seen this play out. This is kind of interesting. Um, some really uh, early and enthusiastic adopters of remote work recognized how important the storytelling was. And they said, where do they tell the best stories? The answer, the best stories are told in Hollywood. <laughs> These are professional storytellers that have a billion and billions and billions of dollars of experience in this industry creating blockbuster stories. And so what we saw is we saw remote teams putting together internal broadcasting storytelling teams. They were adding the skills missing. Sure, everyone on the team could write already and use a document to tell a story, but they were adding uh, video experts, video editors, producers, all to the team. And some of them grew their teams to dozens and dozens of people to tell these stories across the organization. And over the last few years, uh, that experiment has largely failed. Adding those skills in a specific team that isn't responsible for the business lines did not get out the most compelling stories. And now what we're seeing is we're seeing those same companies that know the importance of, of storytelling like they do in Hollywood or like they do on social media, trying to drive that capability down into the organization so that the people who are owning lines of businesses can create stories that are not just essay-like in nature, but multimedia-like in nature that can have a short video clip, that can have an image to reinforce it. Forget making a PowerPoint presentation with the three dots and maybe a nice image, being able to really use all the tools that folks do on social media and the creator space and in Hollywood, in the professional entertainment space, right there at the fingertips of the CEO and COO or the VP of comms or the head of people and culture to really bring their stories to life. I am so grateful for you bringing up this. Okay, so uh, this is a very visual moment. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a box around my head, right? Uh, this is the moneymaker in 2023, right? The, the shoulders up picture, right? In, in, in my background, I've got a bunch of nautical tchotchkes and a, and a loudspeaker, uh, handheld load, loudspeaker that, that I've, uh, <laughs> you know, my last name is Sellhorn, right? So I, I've, I've rebranded those as air horns, you know, brown, 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 you know? And so like, who am I on social media? Those of you that listen to me already know that I'm, I'm very enthusiastic and somebody who is, uh, you know, looking to celebrate moments with others, you know, when they get a new job, when they get a promotion, when they have something happen that, that ought to be celebrated, I'm, I'm there, you know, dropping the air horns for, for those folks. And I think this is something that we all need to do as company leaders is to embrace the, the call to tell the story of ourselves, right? And our companies in ways that people can engage. And you're using the tool that you have at your disposal which is whether it's this 16 by nine or four by three, whatever you're going to end up uh, making our cuts. So maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be a uh, portrait. If you're watching this video on we'll throw uh, the audiogram and, you know, get, get, get the captions going, you know, the whole bit. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're using inside your video box, 
Okay, you have control of your background. Uh, you even used your mouth to go, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think that's because the platform that we're using now, the way that folks will be consuming on the platform, doesn't give you the creativity to be outside of your video box. Maybe this entire podcast, video podcast, should be happening on a ship in the ocean and there should be the gentle sounds of the waves outside and maybe the air horn should be at your fingertips to give it the proper air horn when you're needed. Maybe it should be the ship, the whoa, whoa. And we're doing that right now. You can see this is, it's authentic for sure. Uh, but when you're communicating to a huge base, this might not reflect the brand and the level of professionalism that you're trying to get at. And of course, I, I see this beautiful background you put together. That's very hard to make dynamic, to change that from this meeting now to the next meeting later. And so giving folks that are telling these stories the ability to use bits and bytes or digital media to imbue and reinforce the messages, I think is really important. And we're at the very beginning of this. Today, it's still, what books do you have on your bookshelf behind you? Uh, but very soon, and in some of the leading companies and communities uh, that are at the forefront of remote engagement and remote communications and scaling how they do it, they're using tools to customize entire experiences that reinforce the message beyond just the dot dash that they're preparing beforehand. Well, Jason, thank you for drawing us into this conversation and these ideas and getting us into that meta space, right? Where we're thinking about, ooh, what, what should we be doing? How should we be doing this? It, did this work, right? Uh, did it accomplish the goals that we have? Right. And it turns out that computers can do stuff and uh, we should be telling them what to do. Right. Ah, the 1995 moment. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we, the, the, like, like we can I can change my background to to fit the moment that, that we're in you know, next week or or, you know, we need to return to something from before. We're going to bring that that image back. I think mm -hmm. that's such an interesting idea. Um, I just want to give you a chance to, to we're at the moment of closing here, Jason. And I, I'm curious to hear from you, um, what, are, what is it that, that really makes a difference in this moment today, 2023, versus what was working for you back when you started Tech2 in 2014, right? The, the, things have adjusted and changed over the last 10 years. And mm -hmm. tell us, what are you thinking about these, these next 10? How, what, what's, what's next? Sure, I, I gotta tell you, I've always found success throughout my career whether it's personally or for my team or for the company organization to be zigging when everyone's zagging. And I think that is true now more than ever. And I think in a place where people have become uh, maybe a little complacent and comfortable with the tools of the pandemic, I think we're just at the beginning of what this really means to break down an organization from being a physical place to being widely distributed and what that means for building back up, not just the company, but the individuals and their social life and their experiences as well. And if you were working remotely uh, five years ago, uh, you knew how to do this and you know how to do it today, but the world has changed on you because now everyone's doing it and everyone's thinking about it. And so the hacks that you developed, the way that you built social network, that's changing now that it's happening at scale. And uh, as we know, I focus on communicating at scale and how it changes and breaks and evolves as you grow. Uh, the same is true for any problem that you think is solved. It evolves and changes and breaks as it becomes more widely popular. So uh, we're at the beginning of that. Uh, I will continue to improve and refine our communications, which is great. Uh, and of course, all of these things were difficult enough that we've built tools to help people take their communications to the next level, become storytellers themselves, and cut through a lot of the clutter, the text-based clutter that exists in documents and in Slack and in email, and tell compelling stories, even if they aren't Hollywood producers, uh, to be able to do that really simply in the web browser with a few clicks of the button. Jason, thank you so much for learning out loud with us today. Uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Tyler.